So let's say we have some object-oriented class here. This is a something class. It does something in our game. Who knows what it does, but for the sake of explanation, here it is. And it's pretty simple. All we get is a new to create a new object. Destroy, which has nothing in it, but we will we'll populate it in just a second. And then let's populate this like you would in an actual game. So if we were to use this in game, we'd probably need some form of bindable event if we want to communicate something. So I'm just going to create a new bindable event within our object. And then usually I like to link my classes to something tangible in the game world, like for example, a part. So I'm going to add a part to this. I'm just going to make a new part. There we go. But the issue here is we 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 call instance.new. We create a new bindable event. We create a new part. But they stay in the game forever even if we're done with this something so what we have to do is we have to go to our destroy function and we have to destroy it so for some event you know i'm pretty confident we can just destroy it on the spot there we go but then for some part we first have to check if it exists because we don't want it to error if it doesn't exist so we say if self dot some part then we do self dot some part destroy so if the part still exists in the world, we need to destroy it because we don't want to have parts lying around. So if you create multiple somethings and get rid of them, you want the parts to get destroyed. Okay, so that's that's pretty basic, right? Now let's make a new uh, um, property called self.connection. And this will be linked to a run service connection. So let's do local run service, this game, get service, run service. There we go. And we do run service dot stepped connect and then we time and then delta time. Wait, so is the time oh wait I need a function. Oh crap. Okay, so is the time is that elapsed time or is that like the global time? Okay, okay, I might have to check the documentation on that. But oh oh whatever. Let's just let's just finish implementing this. Mm, but I might need to use delta time, so I might need this. Uh, well, first let's let's test let's test if it works. So let's just test printing. There we go. Uh, let's test this out. Let's run this. It's required in another script, so it should be fine. It gets printing. That's good. That's good. Okay. So now I need to go check the documentation. Come back and finish this. Okay. There we go. This does exactly what I want it to do. It moves some part, and then it moves it by two every stud every 10 seconds since t modulo 10 equals zero so every 10 seconds we'll move it that works let's try it out um doesn't do anything i wonder what oh i forgot to send the parent so we say self dot some part dot parent equals workspace there we go it should work out fine oh where is it oh it's inside here and it's not anchored well we'll figure that out later so what went wrong here i was just caught up with working on my connection from a run service connection but you know what i forgot to do i forgot to add it to the destroy method so what i just showed you there is a typical situation where you can get carried away with what you're doing, with what you're developing, and you can forget to clean up your mess. And that is what the cleanup modules in Roblox are meant to solve. It's meant to alleviate some of that pressure of trying to remember to clean up every single connection, every single part, every single event, whatever, what have you, and allow you to program in, in a more fluid, like more imperative fashion like step-by-step -step fashion because you don't have to keep on jumping back and forth changing your perspective you can stay in the same spot and work and you can know that your objects will be properly disposed of because in this case this would have led to a memory leak we, this connection would have stayed so it either would have aired a bunch and like lagged that server or it would have just built up and eventually ran out of memory and now with the connection it's not that bad with other things like parts or whatever it might be a lot worse because it'll still be left in the game world this can all be solved with a Roblox cleanup module and i say it generally because there's a couple there's trove janitor made there's also one called dumpster there's a bunch of them my personal preference 
is Trove, and that's what I'll be using right now to fix our issue. So let's bring Trove to the rescue. Now for this specific example, I just copy and pasted the source of Trove into a module script into replicated storage, but for your actual game, it'd be better to use a package manager like Wally if you're using Roho, or maybe get it bundled with some other things if that's at all possible. So let's use Trove and fix our issue. So we're going to say local trove equals require game get service replicate storage dot trove. So we got our trove. And so now all you have to do is first make a variable for the trove in our object. So in the self in the function or something that new block, I'm going to say self dot underscore trove equals trove dot new. The only reason I'm using the underscore here is as a naming convention. It has nothing important. But having this underscore basically means that it's private because other objects should definitely not be accessing this something's trove because it's kind of just for itself. And so now I can go down to the destroy. We'll first get rid of all this junk because it's kind of ugly. We can say self dot underscore trove destroy. And there you go. This should be the only line you should ever have to add to a destroy block in a class. Because ideally, you should have to add everything in your trove. So how exactly does a trove work? So a trove is basically like a stash or like, you know, like a trash can. So you take all the things that you need to eventually throw away and you shove it into the trove and the trove at the very bottom destroy method cleans it up. So it's like, you know, dumping everything in a trash can, and once you're done, and the trash can's full, and you're like, you're done with it, you take the trash out, and forget about it. So the same thing here. But we have to, you know, do that. So before this instance.new, we're going to do self uh, underscore trove add, and then parentheses, and then go to the end, and put another parentheses. So what this does is this adds this object to the trove. But it also returns it. So this allows you to make really nice uh, declaration statements. Because usually with a module like mid, I think mid still has this, you would have to say like self.trove add below, below this sum event. So you'd have to add some event manually. But here we can do it all in one line because all this does is return the thing that's created in here. So basically this is the exact same thing as doing this so self dot trove add self dot sum event this one this format here makes a little more intuitive sense because we create the object and then we stash it in our trove to later destroy it so this object will not be destroyed until this is called which will be at the very end of the lifetime of your object but personally i prefer the other way because it's one line and to be honest roblox is already as verbose as it should be. So we can do the same thing with our part. So self.trove add this. And then for our connection, trove actually has a special connect method. So we can do self. underscore trove connect. We can connect this run service dot stepped event, get rid of this connect and colon. Hit a comma there, and then there we go. So this is just a convenient function. All it does is it adds the connection that is created by our stepped event, and it adds this function to the stepped event. And then obviously we can get rid of this self.connection. We don't need that anymore because the only reason we had the connection in the first place was to get cleaned up by the trove, and the trove conveniently handles it. So adding this little block of code at the start of like all your connections will save you from having to remember to disconnect them down the line because this destroy is a catch-all. We add all of our stuff to the trove, and then we dump it in the end. And the reason this works so well is because you're able to think about what you have to do as you're, as you're doing it. So when you create an object, you can instantly destroy it later. It's like a it's almost like a promise. It's not it's definitely not the same thing as a promise module that I covered in another video. You should uh, check that out if you haven't already. But... It is similar in the way that you can leave it and forget about it. You don't have to remember to destroy stuff. When I first started up Roblox development, I had to consciously remember, oh, I had to add this, I have, I have to destroy that later down the line. 
and it led to a whole host of bugs that I just had no clue how to fix. And it was impossible to debug because I didn't know where stuff was. And a lot of the memory leaks probably won't bite you until you're in production and stuff. And a lot of people are joining and stuff is going wrong. So just just for pur our purposes of this video, let's try this out. So this is my script where we require something. We can do a little bit of a wait, like three seconds. And then we can say, uh, we can say S destroy to kill R something. And then we can also put a print within our run service just to say I'm running because once the trove cleans everything up, it should stop saying that. Okay. So we have an error. Well, it turns out I accidentally pressed L while in the trove script. So that is a fat L for having no errors. So let's get rid of that. And now let's try it. So we create our something. It's running for three seconds. And it stops. And then let's check the hierarchy. The part is gone. Wow, it's like, it's like magic. Well, no, it's just a trove and or a maid and or a janitor. So this is a very simple module that at first glance may seem kind of unnecessary. Like, you know, you the programmer, the very smart programmer that you are should be able to destroy all of your stuff yourself because you can't be trusting those pesky third-party modules. They don't... They don't cater to you properly. Like, you, you can make your own code, right? But this is a module that basically helps take the, like, juggling, the mind juggling of programming, makes it a little bit easier. Because you, the programmer, should be thinking about your, like, your game design, your overarching, overarching architecture, not some pesky memory leak bug that should be a very simple fix or shouldn't be a problem in the first place. And these modules help you do that. Now, as for which one you pick, whether it be Trove, whether it be Maid or Janitor, so I think Janitor technically is like the all-around best solution. It has the most features. Maid is kind of like the old, like, grandma of the two others because Trove is made by Sletnik. It works well with Knit, and that's why I used it, and I just like the ergonomics. It has a bunch of extra functions like this connect function. It also has a construct function that calls destroy on, like, a class like this or a part or something like that when it creates it, which that one's pretty cool too. And yeah, so it's just all up to you. And one other thing is that you can actually add functions to your trove. So if I say self trove add, I can just add a function. I should say print cleaned up. And I run this again, you'll see that cleaned up is printed. And the, the use case for this is when you are, for example, binding something to render step because when you bind a render step, you have to unbind from render step. It's not a connection. So you could put that in your trove function. It looks a little bit less clean. It's a little more clunky, but it does do the trick. It's very obvious what you're doing. And any other people reading say, oh, yeah, he's cleaning up his stuff, which that's pretty cool. So, yeah. So that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more roblox scripting content and potentially more module tutorials if you're interested because a lot of these modules are pretty useful but they're a lot of times require an explanation i was skeptical when i started using them because you know like a lot of them just didn't seem very useful but they are and it's good to figure them out and figure out how your workflow can be helped so with that said, comment any more suggestions you have for other modules and if you want i could also do a video on writing my own like trove made module whatever just has like a little exercise because although reinventing the wheel isn't good for like a production game it's just fun to learn how stuff works and it can maybe help you in the future when you're building your own unique module and with that i hope you have a nice day and goodbye i'll see you next time